it was a rough journey. I had so many doubts, so many ranting sessions with my friends. You know, we thought maybe we should have done accounting, maybe we should have done engineering. But I toughed it out and I kept going. And I like to think that it was worth it. In this video, I'm going to go over any advice I have regarding pharmacy school and overall my journey of becoming a hospital pharmacist. Let's go to work. P1 year, set a good foundation for success. I think it's really important to get an internship. If you want to become a hospital pharmacist, you need to get that hospital experience. And depending on the type of internship, some of them can be very, very beneficial. For mine, for example, I was really fortunate to have a really great hospital internship where they allowed me to be really proactive in terms of attending Code Blues and helping the pharmacists out during those. Um, they let us round with the medicine pharmacists on our last year during rotations. They allowed us to do a journal club presentation, do some research, drug use evaluation monitoring. We also had a clinical shift for our last year where we got to practice dosing Vanco and TPNs with the supervision of the pharmacist. Of course, not all internships are like this, but it's still really good to have that experience compounding IV medications and understanding the workflow of the hospital, especially if you were to become a hospital pharmacist in the future, working in the IV room, you're going to be the one checking to make sure that t the technicians compound the medications appropriately. Getting some sort of leadership position, I think is really important your first year as well. You know, um, a lot of times organizations, they look for a level one representative or, you know, a P1 rep for their organization to help advertise. And from there, you can continue on with the organization if you um, enjoy it. So for me, for example, I started off as a level one rep. Um, the following year, we were able to apply for more positions. So I eventually became president-elect. And the following year after that, my P3 year, I eventually became president of the organization. But you know, you don't have to be president of an organization to get residency to become a hospital pharmacist. You can be treasurer, you can be social chair, you can be any some type of leadership role. I think it's just important to have that experience, to have something to talk about in your residency interviews and gaining some of those experiences. And I think it's totally fun too, just being involved. I say one of my biggest tips for P1 year, befriend the upperclassmen. They're gonna help you so much. I can't tell you how many times the upperclassmen have given me such solid advice, whether it be regarding classes, studying tips. Oftentimes they would you know, give us, hand us down their notes or study material, and that just saves you a lot of time. The amount of time it took me to make the handout versus st actually studying the material was not worth it. So take it from me. Get those handouts, those study sheets from your upperclassmen, cross-reference your current notes to make sure that they're up to date, and just spend, try to spend as much time as you can doing active recall. P2 year. The goal is to have a positive trend. Don't beat yourself up if you didn't do so well P1 year. As long as you have a positive uptrend, that's what matters. As long as your grades improve over time, don't beat yourself up, okay? Like a lot of pharmacists tell you, clinically, when you're working, you can't go off of a one solid number. You have to go based off of trends. So it's the same thing. You know, if you had a pretty bad grade, couple bad grades during P1 year, that doesn't matter compared to your P3 and P4 if you excel during those years. I say those matter more. So that leads me to P3 year. Do well on your core modules. Remember when I said, don't waste your time making your notes all pretty? Yes, so that I'd say is one of my biggest advice. My biggest advice is TLDR ugly notes. I'll explain. So I found that, you know, the first couple years of pharmacy school, I wasn't doing so hot. Why? Because I was just obsessive OCD about making my notes pristine and perfect and catching all the details from all the lectures and making it all color coded and nice for me to review. And by the time it was time for me to review, I had not that much time. 
the uglier notes, I found that I actually did a lot better because I tr what I tried to do is that as I'm reviewing the material, my goal is to make a short TLDR, short summary of the material to fit one page. No sentences, don't write sentences, just keywords and things to know about each drug next to it. I'll show you an example. But from there, then my goal is to actively recall, grab a blank sheet of paper and try to recreate that one page summary. And I found this method helped me so much, especially for boards, when you have to learn a gigantic book in your head for an exam for your license. All right, welcome to my ugly TLDR notes for pharmacy. So this entire book I used to study for CPGE and NAPLEX. And literally each page, I tried to dedicate it to a topic. And I forced myself to make it not as pretty. You know, just when I found myself trying to, too hard to make it pretty, I had to like slap myself. But here's for example. So, pulmonary arterial hypertension. What I pretty much did was, there's different drug classes, right? So I had them here. I boxed all the drugs that fall within that category. So we have here Alipros. Then inside, I put the brand name because for uh, CPGE, they love brand names. So I had to remember that. So generic brands in the parentheses. And what's interesting is that each of these different drugs had different formulations. So to Prosenol, this Tybaso is an inhalation. So I just put that there. This one's a sub QIB. This one's a PO. And then I also wanted to make sure I memorized the contraindications. So ibuprofenol, contraindicated in heart failure. Whereas this one, contraindicated in hepatic impairment. So I went that throughout. And in terms of if there's any differences in dosing too. So I'm not going to be able to memorize every single dose milligram strength in my head. It's not very realistic. So with this one, I put, you know, this one's BID. Visually, I can see um, these two here are QD, QD. So visually in my head, I can remember, oh, one of them has a different dosing. So it'll be this one. I love this one. Black box warning. I drew literally black boxes for black box warnings. Haha. <laughs> very easy. Um, and look, I drew a bigger one for the entire drug class because they are REMS. So as you can see here, it's messy, but it helps me remember. So once I'm done the material, writing what I think is important and key to remember, it's in one page. Then I go ahead and find a blank page. Oh, not a lot of blank pages, but I'll find one, try to scribble it out, try to memorize it. And that really helped me tr actively recall this material. And one of my biggest advice is just enjoy the journey, enjoy the ride. Pharmacy school, it can be a little stressful. Okay, a lot of stress, but you're gonna make a lot of good memories. You're gonna meet a lot of new people, make a lot of friends, meet a lot of mentors, get inspired, and you're gonna miss it. P4 year, do well on your appy rotations. Residency is not necessarily required, but it's much more preferred now over no residency. So in order to get a good residency, um, you need some letter recommendations, especially from your medicine rotation or any important rotations that are relevant to residency. So I had three letters from, one was from my medicine preceptor. One was from my professor who was the one in charge of the organization that I was in charge of. And another letter of recommendation was from my supervisor at my internship. Try to do really well during your appy rotations, and I mean, you know, be proactive, take initiative. A lot of times during these residency interviews, I get asked a lot of questions about what's something that you provided to the department that benefited them, or something along the lines of that. So. 
Let's say if you were proactive, you took initiative, you saw, you saw that there was a problem in their workflow, or you saw that something could have been improved and you took initiative and you helped create a monitoring sheet or you helped um, update their protocol or found some flaws that need to be fixed. I think that's perfect for you know, residency questions or something to bring up. What's really important is that during your appy rotations, keep an Excel sheet of all of your interventions during that time because they will ask you this during residency interviews. Oh, what was your most significant intervention? What's an intervention that was not agreed upon by a doctor? How did you resolve it? Uh, what was your favorite intervention? What was your least favorite intervention? Blah, 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 blah. Like interventions everywhere. And it's hard to look back when it's block one versus block six versus block seven. Just try to keep an active log of everything you've done. And that really help you, you know, remember for your interviews.